In the professional world of adulthood, we're forced to cover our tattoos, put on our suits, and push the person we once were into the shadows. But today, today I'm here to remind myself that I'm not just anyone. I'm a horse girl. This horse is really a set of horses. It comes with a poster and individually labeled horses so you know exactly what you're getting. It comes in a professional brown briefcase. I love this set for bringing my shadow self into the workplace. I can easily disguise this piece as a utilitarian work purse. Not only is it super professional, but it's also a beautiful piece of fashion. Now, there is one downside to this briefcase, which is that it comes with like 20 horses and they kind of all take on a hive mind of their own. Sometimes when I get into work, I worry that when I open my briefcase in the morning, they'll mutiny and stampede, revealing to my coworkers who I really am. And I just can't have that. Let's be honest, no one really likes a horse girl. Thinking about that, it keeps me up at night. Speaking of keeping me up at night, let me introduce you to my next horse. It's a big horse, cat size. I know this is supposed to be my horse collection of the past, but I kind of see this horse being a part of my... I mean, it is a part of my present, and I think it will be a part of my future. One night, my cat saw me braiding my new horse's hair, and ever since then, she stopped sleeping in my bed at night. Jealous bitch. Since I get lonely when the ghosts come and haunt me at night, I've decided to fully replace my cat with this plastic toy horse. Sure, it's not entirely comfortable to sleep with a big hunk of plastic in my bed. If I put my new friend in the fridge during the day, at night I can wrap my arms around it and pretend it's the cold, hard body of Edward Cullen. <sighs> a dream come true, so... Nice horsey. These next horses I'm showing you are actually merch from the 2002 classic Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron. I saw it in theaters, it was life changing. We have here Spirit himself, his love interest, Rain, and his son, Spirit Jr. The wiki describes Rain as a beautiful chestnut paint mare with a slender, well-rounded body. Her eyes are crystal blue and her mane and tail are creamy white, flaxen. Her hooves are light brown. Spirit is a buckskin mustang. He has a powerful frame and a handsome face. I don't know who wrote that vaguely pornographic description of Spirit and his family, but you know, I am the first to admit that this is a beautiful family. Yes, they are attractive, but... I think that the attractiveness, the fame, it's gone to their head. They have all this money from the movie, and I think that they've used it in bad ways. Their hair is perfectly coiffed. I'm sure they have stylists do it every day. Um, their faces are really, really hard. They're like frozen solid. Can't believe it's not Botox. And so that just makes them, to me, kind of an unapproachable trio of horse toys. Um, I don't know if they're the first horses I would play with, if I'm being honest, and I feel bad saying that, but they don't care. They have everything they want. They are the talk of town, and who am I to begrudge them for being satisfied with that? These are their next door neighbors. They are a mother and daughter. The dad's out of the picture. Um, as you can see, they're very fashion conscious. I don't know if you can see that, but they kind of have a holographic coat that they're wearing. And yeah, they're like super fashion conscious. And I know that they kind of look at the effortless elegance of fame that their neighbors have. But honestly, if they are listening to me right now, I just want to say that I would play with them any day. I think that their outfits are cute. And I know that Spirit and his family think that these outfits are a little bit garish, but I think they're cute and if I could fit in them, I would wear them. I really would. Another great thing about this duo of horses is, as you can see, 
they have not gotten Botox. Their faces are fully, fully movable. And, you know, that's more than you could say for Spirit and his family of sellouts. Am I right? <laughs> oh my god. Next up, I have this horse. This horse is a veritable snack. Everything from its dignified posture to its sleek mane to its clear eyes to the way that the red of its saddle blanket offsets its fur. Everything about this horse says, eat me. Next up, we have a horse that was a big part of my past. So this horse I got on a weekend trip to a small Michigan island called Mackinac Island when I was about two or three years old. When I came back from that trip, I contracted pink eye. And as you can see by the brown stains on this horse, it's never really fully recovered from the taint of illness. But honestly, I like it better for that. I'm not afraid to play with this horse in the mud. You know, it may have given me pink eye in the first place, but we have been together for years, through thick and thin, and I think it's safe to say that this horse is my ride or die. Next up we have Bullseye. He is a horse from the Toy Story movie. Unlike Spirit and his clan of stuck-up bitches, he is so down to earth and honestly I relate to him more than any of the other horses in the barn. Here's the thing about Bullseye, he's not like the other horses. He's too big to fit in the barn. Um, other horses talk about that, you know. Also, he has this weird bandana, which is not really common fashion for horses, and his legs are made of, like, plush fabric, so he can't really shave his legs like the other horses can. If he did put a blade to his legs, it would just, like, raise through the fabric and stuffing would be all over the place. Um, so... Yeah, the other horses do talk, and um, kind of unfortunately, he hangs out with the most popular horses in school, and they they kind of just let him tag along because they feel bad for him, but they kind of do whisper amongst themselves, and it's sad. Honestly, it is sad to see that because, like, I do relate, but I mean, props to them for letting him hang along. So these are the most popular horses in school. They have really pretty faces. They seem like they're thoroughbred. They probably come from rich families, but honestly they're kind of nondescript as far as horses go. But you know, that is always how popularity works, isn't it? Their best friend, Black Beauty, should be the most popular girl in school. She's uniquely beautiful. She's artistic. She's nice to everyone. She's actually the only one of the popular girls who talks to Bullseye, is that his name? But because she doesn't really show off or anything like that, people kind of just forget about her and her meaner, less beautiful friends get all the attention and they're the most popular girls in school, which is kind of sad. But like I said, isn't that always how popularity works? Next up, we have a group of horses. It may not seem like these horses have a lot in common. One thing that they do share is that they're all wearing saddles, and that's because they all belong to the same polo team. These are competitive horses. They are really athletic and into sports. They have a pep in their step. They've got a little bit of an exhibitionist side to them. They love to compete. One kind of annoying thing about these horses is that they do eat a lot because of their physically active lifestyle. Um, that would be annoying to have to pay for it if they weren't made of plastic. These are actually Ken's favorite horses. They are the horses that win competitions, and thus they are the horses who bring home the medals. Ken likes to wear their medals to brony conventions that he attends. Finally, last but not least, we have these carnival horses. Aesthetically, these horses take the cake for me. I am a maximalist in terms of design. The busier something looks, the better. I like when stuff just looks like a big explosion. Just like, my idea of great art is like a funfetti cake thrown onto a canvas, and 
these horses do it for me. They come with names. Their names are Chelsea, Sabrina, and Sapphire. And though I love the way these horses look, I do have to say I have a few questions on the artistic direction of these horses because it just doesn't make sense to me. Make it make sense. Oh, my cat's here. She's asking for food. Hi! Hi, cute! Oh, I'm filming a video right now. You're so cute! Hi! Yeah, sorry about that. There's the design. These are metal horses. They are heavy. They are sizable. They have weight in your hand. Their stands, on the other hand, are made of plastic flimsy, poor quality. What I'm wondering is why? <laughs> it seems like there's an imbalance in construction. Having heavy horses held up by a flimsy base seems like a questionable choice, especially in terms of like liability. Carnival horses are meant to be ridden by small children, what if the base snaps in half when a child climbs on this horse? Likely they just made the bases plastic because it's cheaper, but I don't think that's a smart choice, especially if this is going to be a working carnival horse, which it damn well looks like it's supposed to be. Okay, the other thing I'm wondering is about the names. Sabrina is a horse with a blue base, Chelsea is a horse with a lot of blue decorations. Sapphire, a horse named after a blue gemstone, has a pink base and green decorations. Where exactly did they get the name Sapphire from? Doesn't it seem like one of the other horses could be appropriately named? Lastly, Sabrina and Chelsea seem to be named after 90s children. Sabrina after Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and Chelsea after Chelsea, that girl who lived down the street from me and tried to convince me that she had a dolphin-shaped pool. By the way, she didn't. Sapphire is not a 90s girl's name. It seems like Sapphire should be named something like Jessica or Kylie or Mackenzie. You know, for conformity's sake. Whatever happened to conformity? If anyone ever watches this, please, for my peace of mind, comment what Sapphire's 90s baby girl name should be. Because otherwise, it's going to keep me up all night. And that would not be fair. Keeping me up all night would not be fair to my bedfellows. Would it, Edward? Good, Edward. I should have put him in the fridge today. So that's all I have for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed this window into my soul. I know that it's ghastly and rotting from the inside out, but I hope you can accept me for who I am because I'm going to accept you for who you goddamn well are. I hope you can accept me for who I am. You better. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. This video is dedicated to conformity my elementary school bullies, and the mysterious beauty of irony.